giving a piece of myself to everyone. And so it's incredibly important, and my therapist hears all about it, of how I just want to be in my room sometimes, alone. Um, and then that's when I get creative. Well, last night, you were in your room alone. You got a little drunk and went on Instagram Live. And I was feeling very creative. <laughs> the whole understanding of the afterlife was framed in this like, will you or won't you mm. be accepted into heaven? And like, I guess that's kind of the purpose is like, it's a moral guidepost, yeah. right? And like, you need to be, you need to have the fear of God in you to be accepted into the kingdom of heaven. And I just like, I think that is so dangerous because you're not doing it for the right reasons. That's so selfish. And I think that that is where Christians get it wrong a lot of the time is like, you're not living to, you know, create a peaceful world with your fellow man, like the Bible teaches. Mm -hmm. You're living very selfishly, so you make it to heaven. Cool quote from Dali is, it is important to spread confusion, not eliminate it. With these trending, you know, like, Hollister and all that, mm -hmm. it's like, I just, it's a status symbol too. Yeah. So not only am I hoping that the boys are looking at me, I want people to think that I'm like rich. Yeah, and, I'm, you and know. like there, like I'm with the times yeah. kind of shit. I no, this is not something that's, technically profound. I mean, it's pictures of soup cans. This is no Caravaggio or Van Gogh. This isn't something we would normally find beautiful, which I love because what is art? What does it mean? Why do we make it? It's also a parody of mass production and this capitalist consumerist culture, you know, that we all exist in. A serial representation of an image drains its meaning. So when we look at this, a lot of people, when they look at this work, they get frustrated. And that's a, a big thing with modern art as well, is I could have done that. I could have painted 32 pictures of soup and called it art, and it could have been sold for millions of dollars. But it's not that easy, is it? Because if you could have done it, why didn't you? It's an understanding a person for what makes them a person. Exactly. And not just tits in an ass. Uh. It's like you're kidding, right? That's, it's shameful. It's so scary. Th that's what I used to think as a 16 year old. Oh, when I turn 21, I'm gonna get lip injections and you know, get a, a wig and do this and do that and get laser hair removal. All that shit is just like, what? Like you have nothing more to offer than just be a canvas for bullshit. Exactly. For a man to project his fantasies upon me. It's yeah. just like, oh my God, I'm a human too. So it's, it's a crazy evolution. And then I got to college and I was kind of on my own. And then I went through this like, oh, I need to be saved again. And then I was like, mm. no, I don't. I just mm. like, I'm you really down. You got scared down. a little bit. I got scared. Well, cause that's the whole thing. It's hellfire and brimstone. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like, all you know, fear. it's all fear mongering. Mm -hmm. That's all that, I mean, having an evangelical faith, that's all it is. So. Amen. Amen for real. Was it a big deal with your family? Oh, it still is. Still is. Oh, really? I, wow. I talk about it online and my parents and family do not like it. Wow. And they so think you're going to hell. Well, they think that LA's changed me, and that's really not the case. I've never been more myself. Right. It's just that I finally feel free enough right. to, you know, speak about it. And it's upsetting, you know, because that's a, it's so much ingrained in the culture of being Southern and being, you know, having that Southern family that you pray before every meal and you do this and you mm -hmm. go to church mm -hmm. and you whatever. And it's just like, I don't subscribe to that anymore. It's really tough for them. So wow. I don't know. It's an ongoing thing, but I'm happiest I've ever been. So when you go back and visit your family, do you still lock hands and say prayers mm -hmm. and stuff? You just wow. I play along. Just yeah. the vibe. Yeah. Well, because I'm not gonna be like I'm not doing that. You know, it's like <laughs> I'm not gonna be a, an annoying bitch. Yeah. And do you miss God's presence in a way at all? I miss the uh, what's that called? The like innocence of being stupid. Right. Uh, <laughs> totally. Because it's like there's an answer to stuff. Right. It's like you had, I had for the longest time a clear answer. When there was a problem, I would pray. And now it's just like, well, <laughs> yeah. well, shit. Gesamtkunstwerk, which basically means, in layman's terms, a total work of art. It encompasses all the different forms of art sculpture, painting, music, composition, poetry. It's all, it all comes together and works together. You're talking about community earlier. Mm -hmm. the sense yeah. of community that TikTok has brought a lot of people together. Mm -hmm. The information sharing. We are aware of so many world crises. TikTok forces you to know, and it forces yeah. you to care. And I think that uh, that peer pressure, you know, of like your favorite influencer or your friends on social media showing support and doing something about it, whether it's performative or not, it's still raising, you know, awareness in a certain sense. I think that the globalization of TikTok is truly a marvel. We did it.
in what I've dedicated my life to and what I've put my family through and what I've been through the fucking ringer for, we did it. But I have never paused to think, what does this mean? I consider myself an ex-Christian. Okay. Because I was raised with all that Southern yeah. religious trauma. Um, what, what happened in your life that you realized it was bullshit? It's just the natural human doubt. Mm. You know, like when you're raised, it's cultish. When oh, you're raised totally. to think that that is the one true way. And you start to, like, as a teenager, be like, is it? Because I'm online and I'm meeting people of many different ethnic and cultural backgrounds. And maybe, like, they're not Christian and maybe this is wrong. And then you get kind of, like, reprimanded for thinking that that's not, you know. And so I just kind of rejected it all through college. I, I thought I had this spiritual awakening again because my college was very Christian. And, and I went to church and I cried and I went through all the motions and I slowly realized that I'm not faithful. I am obsessed with the feeling of feeling validated by other Christians. I find it very, very hard to separate. Are you yourself online always? Yeah. So does that make it difficult for you? Like, like when people criticize your online persona, does it feel like they're criticizing you? Absolutely. And if they don't like a video I've put up or, you know, a, a photo or literally any form of content. <laughs> That too. You know, I'm excited to get old with my friends. I'm excited to see my friends age the same way that I'm aging. Like, what a beautiful, I could cry about it right now. Like, to do that all together, you know, and to, to have lifelong friendships and to experience everything. I want to experience everything. And I'm just, I love being alive. Because <laughs> we're bred as young girls to think, I just need to be attractive and desirable. And that's when I'll have made it. That's when I'll feel whole. And when you remove that from the equation entirely, it's like, well, what's left? Oh, all these other incredible qualities. Mm. I, I love that that's the movement online and that a lot of my audience feels the same. So. A little fleur de lis he used to stamp. So we're starting to see this sort of mechanization of art, which, you know, art is supposed to be this precious, fine detailed thing. And now we're seeing it mass produced Almost. That's the thing is, is this, um, the internet has taught me, you know, like, who the fuck am I trying to please? Surrealism is, is attempting to tap in to the subconscious. And this is so obviously based on Sigmund Freud's groundbreaking theories about the human unconscious, the human subconscious, and, and our dreams, and how that all interacts and, and plays into who we are as people, our, our deepest wants and desires. This isn't very divine. Carvacho based the players in his paintings on real passerbys in whatever Italian city he happened to be in at the time. The face of Jesus, Mary Magdalene, St. Peter, or any, or all of them were based on random passerbys. Waiters, prostitutes, servants. He incorporated humanity back into these divine scenes. Honestly, is we're in an age of neo, neo, neo feminism, whatever wave of feminism we're on now, where we are realizing and teaching that women don't owe you pretty, mm. women don't owe you sex, women don't owe you beauty, women don't owe you shit. And in that, a lot of the pinup beauty standard femininity is lost. You know, of like what a woman should be. You should want to be a housewife. Here's how to be a good wife. Here's how to be a good girlfriend, da, 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 whatever. When you remove that from the equation, okay, my goal is not to be a wife at all. Oh, you're a real person now. You know what I mean? And so that's kind of my angle is I'm not, I enjoy that content online. You know, like I just went on a first date. And here's me getting ready for it. And this guy was so nice. Like, I like to watch that stuff. But I am not envious of those girls because the dating pool is awful. Yeah. It's awful. And the more I'm online, the more my standards are raised and the more my idea of what femininity is changes. As a woman, what I should be, all the multifaceted parts of being a woman. And there is a divinity in being a woman, of, of, of a life giver, you know, and, and everyone came from a woman. And so it's it's, all that's in the back of my head when I'm thinking about Hinge or Raya or Bumble. You know, it's like there's not going to be Chad, who's in finance, who lives in Encino, isn't going to be the man of my dreams. So 
for the time being, and especially because I'm on this journey of, of accepting what it means to be a woman not in like Western society standards, I'm not focused on that at all. I think it's a natural human instinct to want to be loved and to love, and, and I think I have a lot of love to give. But if that goes to my friends and my family right now, that's all. Yeah, um, yeah. I learned the term from TikTok, obviously. Yeah. And then it kind of brought me into this spiral of like, what does that mean for how I see myself? Yeah. How I see other women? Mm -hmm. How I see famous women? Yeah. And then the female gaze, well, I didn't even think, you know, there was an opposite of that. Yeah, there's like nothing really. Yeah, and the female gaze really, from living with Sarah, who is a non-binary lesbian. Yeah. I've never understood the female gaze more than, you know, how a woman sees the world. Yeah. When it's not influenced by these outside characteristics of wanting to be attractive for a man. Men yeah. mean nothing to Sarah. Oh, they play no role in her life. How free is she? Yeah, what's negative zero? Literally, <laughs> she is on a different planet. I know. So I envy it. I do too. <laughs> but at the same time, you know, that comes with its own struggles too. So yeah. living with Sarah has really helped me see myself more through the female gaze yeah. because she always says like women are art even people that are not men non-binary folk you know yeah. like and specifically women because we're women yeah seeing yourself as a work of art and as this sort of divine energy as cringe as that is <laughs> it's true it's to true. a certain extent it's we give so life to the world. Yeah. <laughs> the level we see today with like the way people worship the Kardashians, mm -hmm. they worship internet figures, they worship these people who like are just normal people. They wipe their butt the same way you and I do. But I get it because like you said, I've been on both sides. So it's like, it means so much because you form a personal connection with those people. I mean, I literally had a parasocial relationship with Brent and Link yeah. for the longest time that I met them and I was like, oh, they're just men. <laughs> <laughs> like, did that It showed women like doing the things that like everyone has a purpose and it just fills me with so much fucking rage that women lose a sense of purpose because first and foremost the most important thing becomes pleasing men and imagine a world where that doesn't exist <laughs> imagine a world where you can pursue your hobbies and the things that fill you with joy and and be free of of having to wonder if you look good doing it because I also have this existing sentiment and philosophy in my head of what a privilege it is to get old and to have experienced life and to have your body reflect that you have lived because it is a privilege and a, a beautiful blessing to get to live, to get to wake up every morning and experience how beautiful life can be and how sorrowful life can be. That is the human experience. It, I will preach it at every fucking mountaintop that humanity is the universe experiencing itself over and over again. And what a privilege to get to live to the end of your life, 70 to 100 years, and, and to show it. Like to have wrinkles where the smiles have been. You know, and, and to have skin that is sun speckled and whatever. And, and I know that it's not considered beautiful, but fuck me, you lived, you know? And I just, to have that philosophy kind of taken from us as women, because first and foremost, we owe the world beauty, right? If you're not beautiful, what are you? To have that be put in place of, you know, smile lines like crow's feet. I think crow's feet are the cutest thing ever. And, uh, to get rid of crow's feet, you know, to preserve youth. How is youth more important than, you know, the beautiful weight of life? And also, I, I, I pity men because they are victims of a system they created for themselves. We're all miserable in it. You know, it's like I, I am angry, but at the core of it, I have sympathy for it. Because I'm a woman. Huh? I have settled on um, to take the place of God, the universe. <laughs> Look at that! You I just changed the name and suddenly it's the same thing. I changed That's the name clever. and suddenly um, I feel okay. I think that humanity is the universe experiencing itself. Whoa. In all 
rotten and fruitful forms. Mm -hmm. I think that to be human is the gift, and that is to be lived while we're alive. To experience the heartbreak and the joy and the crying and the giggling mm -hmm. and the birth and the death and all of that is the human experience, and then it's done, and then it happens again and it keeps experiencing itself over mm. and over. I think that that is the point of life, and I also think that in that sense, the afterlife doesn't matter. All of it is just contained in the universe itself. Like I don't know. you are experiencing the entire- Doing that, you create these almost genuine relationships yes. with your fans, and they really see me as an older sister or a, and I think that there's such a, a purity in that, and there's an innocence in that of like, God, I just, love her and, and she comforts me. Jenna Marbles used to be that for me. You know, it's like, I didn't think of her as my best friend, but she was a comfort for me. And if I can be that for people, what an honor. But at the same time, it gets kind of dangerous. Oh, like little me and like all the little girls everywhere that was like, at what point did you hang up the Barbie doll? And did you start, you know, shopping at Hollister and start thinking about how boys look at you? And it was no longer about playing mermaids and about being this innocent little human experiencing nature and life and love and innocence. It does not mean what it used to. When something was viral 10 years ago, everyone on the internet saw it. It's true. The power of something going viral on YouTube or going viral on Tumblr or Reddit. I have goosebumps. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like that power has been given to the people. And while that's incredible, um, if someone comes up to you and asks, have you seen this TikTok? It was viral. It has 25 million views and 10 million likes. No, I haven't seen it. That means, it means nothing now. And so I'm incredibly aware and grateful for when the kombucha meme went viral, that was one of the first TikToks ever to go viral because musically it just turned to TikTok and someone had downloaded it. TikTok watermarks all, the, all their videos uploaded it to Twitter. So they were watching this video and it, it was marked with my username and the TikTok logo. And they were like, no, what the fuck is this? Downloaded the app and that's kind of, TikTok is incredibly generous and kind to me because I was part of that story, you know, of, of creating TikTok into the monolith it is today. Um, and it's interesting to look back and think, oh yeah, I had my viral moment and I was one of the lucky ones that, I mean, I was seeing my face on climate change posters in Australia. It was in Hindi, it was in Arabic, you know, because there was a universality to that form of a, a mixed reaction. And so I'm very appreciative for it. And I recognize that that only happened because of a certain amount of circumstances that lined up perfectly. That and so was there, a, was there a moment where you realized you were ready to leave the faith? Yeah, it was, it was very <laughs> gradual. I mean, like, I was baptized at the age of 12. It's Is like that you're, late? You're in no... I, it's about right on time. I okay. mean, if you grow up in the church, it's around middle school, they start doing baptisms because it's like you're sentient for the first time. Okay. And I just, that is so young. And I have, I still to this day struggle with like my idea of femininity and my womanhood and sexuality and mm -hmm. being sex positive because of the church. You know, really? like I will never, it is truly religious trauma. And uh, the internet's helped, but the internet is also, the pendulum has swung so much the other way of like, you need to be body positive, sex positive, <laughs> man positive, da. No, you don't actually. Talking about World War I to begin, which was a global conflict, a 20th century war being fought with 19th century tactics that just left society tattered and broken. I mean, a whole generation of young soldiers dead. For what? I like this because it's the struggle of the human self with both external evil forces as well as internalized, um, the, the battles of the heart and mind, the internalized weaknesses. I think late night is archaic and outdated yeah. and it only works for white men. You know, like we've tried to put other people of different backgrounds into that role and they fail miserably because it's not built for them. So I'm- What if we took just subject X put it on a podium, gave it proper lighting, called it art. How does that affect our perceptions and understanding of art with a capital A? Answering this question of can this be art? Is this art? Is this a valid subject for art? Which is a paradoxical question in itself because arguably everything is art. Like uh, Pablo Picasso's Guernica, commentary on the German bombing of 
the Spanish town Guernica and just the suffering and pain that events like that cause. I mean, after the bombing is done and you're moving on with world events, that city that is now decimated, that's what Picasso tried to capture. But the internet loves to take it too far. Oh, every time. Yeah, because people to my face would never, you know what I mean? Or yeah. if they'd be like, yeah, it's because that big fucking forehead. I'd be like, <laughs> you know, because it's like, I made that joke, so of course you can make it, but it does kind of hurt. But it stings when it comes from you. It yeah. does. It's one of those things like you can bully your sibling, but no one else can bully your sibling. It was in protest of the support for like the traditional art style, you know, like kind of more conservative. Klimt and his peers wanted to take their artistic vision in a different direction that the current administration, ew, didn't really agree with. Not really. The beauty of surrealism and how vague it is as a movement is that these artists were free from the restraints of reason, aesthetics, morality. A lot of dark shit appears in the surrealist work. That's also what drives me insane is like, I now live my life in this way where I'm like, I should have filmed that. Like everything is content. And I hate being around people where they think that, but like they don't have that internal filter of, I don't need to film this. The God honest truth is I don't deal with it well. Yeah. It's just things that I didn't even know I needed to be self-conscious about those things. Mm -hmm. Same. Like, cause I knew I had a big forehead, but it was like, God damn, y'all really are, it's hidden. Yeah, yeah. yeah oh, we got the curtains oh, over. Yeah, smart. But it's, you know, it's things like that, especially as a woman, like my body gets picked apart. And it's like, you wouldn't do that to Cody Ko. Yeah. No one's commenting on Cody's videos. Cody, thank you for representing my body type. <laughs> but they do it to me. It's like, what are we talking about? Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know, it's, it's you can be incredibly grateful because I, I am, you know, but all that after a while kind of adds up. 100%. And there are, have been moments where I'm like, I would rather work it out back steakhouse. Like yeah. I would rather just say F it all, delete everything. Mm -hmm. There are moments where it just, you know, people dogpile and it's just awful, but I haven't and I won't. And in doing that, I'm kind of negating the entire idea of surrealism. They used dreams and the absurdity of dreams as inspiration for their work. There is no meaning to be interpreted. It's art. It's a multifaceted issue because there always will be those creators that make you feel inferior. Mm. You're not doing this enough. Someone's better at your craft than you. They're prettier than you. They're stronger than you. They're whatever. And then there's the flip side where it's like kind of the, the area that me and like Sarah Baska fall into of like, we're just the bestie. Yeah, so yeah. I'm not inherently here to make you feel bad or like make you feel like you need to change something. I'm here to make you giggle and, you know, bond over things that we all like. And like I said, you know, I'm a victim of it. And I'm also, I guess, in the position where I'm doing it now. But it's, it's like, would I rather go back to the bank? No. Barbie can be anything. You can be anything. Girls can be anything. And it's an accepted truth in Barbie land. And my grandparents specifically, they always come at me with, you know, like, you moved to LA and you just try, I don't know who you are. And I'm like, Mimi, you didn't know who I was ever, you know, cause I've been presenting as that little Southern, the Southern woman, you know, she doesn't leave the house without makeup on. She's married and has a college degree by 21. She has kids by 24. You know, it's like, it's this perfect life that's been kind of planned out for you, especially as a white woman from the South. Yeah. And I just rejected it always, but I played to it with my family because you don't want to be the black sheep. Sure. You know, I want to come out like yelling all of these incredibly leftist <laughs> slogans yeah, just to, yeah. you know, my family is just not, they're not in the mindset to even be receptive to any of it. So mm -hmm. I moved to LA and I was like, I have never been more myself. And that's what they don't understand, you know? So it's like all that to bring it back to religion. It's like, I found this new sense of self and freedom but all that security I had for mm. post-life, gone. So what is it a worthy trade? 